Hi guys, welcome back to Boomex Beauty Beat. Yep, that's me with no makeup on. Italian situation under my eyes. It's pretty harsh. And I actually did a eye mask last night from Clinique. It's a eye under eye surge because I didn't want it to be too terrible for today. But and it it was this is actually amazing compared to what it was yesterday. <laughs> So if you can deal with these under eyes, hopefully you can deal with watching me walk through this video because I am super excited about this. This is going to be a new series for me. I'm doing a recreation of some looks by Painted by Spencer. I've been uh, talking about it in some of my videos and I plan to do several um, makeup artists uh, in the same structure where we kind of plan out a few looks over the week because I really feel like you can't get down all of their special favorite products techniques all in one video I think it takes two or three or four looks depending on how many you feel like doing um, so today we're going to do soft glam and I am 50 with dark hair and brown eyes and the girl that he's working on is young and blonde and cute so we're gonna see if his techniques are gonna work on an uh, you know little old broad like me <laughs> so I am uh, going to be interchanging a couple of the products that I know that he does use on a regular basis because I don't have absolutely everything that he does let's get started so step one he starts with this rose dehydration face cream uh, from Fresh Beauty, I think it is. I uh, don't have that, but I do have the Laura Mercier uh, Flawless Skin Infusion de Rose Moisturizing Glow Mask, and he uses this like all the time. So pretty interchangeable. I feel confident that my look will be similar to his using this. So I'm going to apply this. But two things I'm also going to do because you know I have such dark circles is I'm going to apply my Becca Under Eye uh, Primer Anti Fatigue and a color corrector by Clinique just to kind of calm things down and so things don't get too ashy under my eyes if he does any heavy powdering and stuff like that. So one of the first things I want to say is uh, your beauty blender or the sponge you're using is kind of crucial with how he works anyway. Um, I've got mine expanded with water to about the same width. They start out pretty little like this and then they should grow to about that so that you have enough moisture uh, in the sponge and then if you need to you just take a paper towel and squish out the excess so it's not like too wet if that makes any sense but it's definitely got some dampness to it and if you don't have this you already can't do the look the same because the uh, water in the sponge really changes the way the product goes on so I'm going to take a little bit of this at, you know he says a dime size amount this is that mask that um, he uses all the time and I've been using it now for a few weeks every day morning and night because it's that unbelievable it just leaves your skin feeling really um, dewy I already messed up because I was talking to you guys I'm supposed to put this um, I believe that he just I'm just gonna make sure that I do this right um, hold on cream from fresh and after I have yeah Okay, so what he does is, he doesn't do it like I didn't just glove it on like the way that I just did. Ignore. He takes it on his hand like I did, and then he dips his uh, sponge into the mask. And he does a stippling motion that is really refined. He kind of grabs and, and sort of lightly taps and twists it all over. And... I notice this is really important later because of the style of blending that he does with his sponge. So I don't have this down. I'm kind of trying to learn his motions. He kind of does a stippling motion because I think that could be key to uh, the way that his skit, his product blends out. Now when he puts this on and you see this on camera, the woman is just looking so ever so dewy and... <laughs> glowy and perfect and uh, yeah I'm a little jealous about that let's move on to foundation you guys are going to laugh at me because I am seriously you know he's using Giorgio Armani foundation in this next one but he also uses this Anastasia 
um, luminous foundation as well with many many looks so I know it's gonna do but I literally I don't have either of those but I do have I did have a sample look at it I opened it and it's all messy I do have a sample of the Anastasia luminous from Sephora so what I did is I mixed up a little bit of a batch on my hand and what he's about to do is actually give her a tan and that's with this foundation and I thought this would be interesting to to try to do to myself and probably funny so I don't have I can't add any more light so this might be a little bit on the dark side but we're gonna do it anyway so what he does is he takes his sponge he takes the bottom of the sponge he takes a little bit up off his hand and he starts to stipple it all over that's about the same amount well approximately the same amount of darkness I gotta bring a mirror closer I can't see what I'm doing and he, uh, when you're doing a tan, obviously you have to cover everything. You've got to cover the skin all around the neck because otherwise it will look ridiculous. So he just does this, you know, coverage all using the bottom of the sponge. And the reason that he does that, and I used to do this too, I didn't know this was a thing for other makeup artists. I thought it was just my thing, is he... Um, uses the the melds together the all of the different textures the moisturizer that i use with the mask goes into the sponge the foundation goes into the sponge everything's going into the sponge and creating like a little soup in there and really helps everything to kind of blend together nicely i'm not really watching what i'm doing i'm sort of feeling my way so i can Kind of talk and not you know look away too much but I'm going to cover everything as he's doing trying to go into I hate this part of the forehead because it always I always get like a little crack in there because it's hard to jam it right into your hairline especially if you're changing the color this much so I've got to make sure I've got <laughs> I only have a one shot here because I only had a sample to get this fully covered so I'm trying to do so and yeah you guys can actually give yourself a tan if you feel like it I mean there's no rules to this right so um, having all that moisture down from that moisture mask you it, it really does leave your skin feeling like dewier than normal and it it might feel thick to some of you but I have dry skin so I love it it's not an oily feeling mask, but it's super hydrating. So I'm just I'm using up the rest of what's on my hand here to try to get this sort of tan accomplished. I'm gonna try to bring it around my neck and around the back here so that you don't, it's kind of a pet peeve of his to see the skin that you shouldn't be seeing that's diff different color <laughs> if you don't do the back of the neck and the, everything else, so. Okay, well that foundation's not bad actually. It's nice for a, you know, kind of medium coverage. I'm a full coverage person, so it's good for me to jump outside my comfort zone and try something like this. All right, moving on to the next step. Next step is going to be the Kevin O'Quaff Skin Enhancer Concealer. This is not a cheap concealer, you guys. I don't remember exactly what I paid for it. I think it's in around the $50 range. It's not cheap at all. And I hated it when I first tried it on. There's so much technique involved with this, but it is kind of a one-off. I've never seen another concealer quite like it. He's using color SX04. I'm using concealer SX05, just a slight shade difference, but it will accomplish the same thing. So it's a really thick and creamy substance, you guys can see. And basically he takes it up on a flat brush a lot actually on a fat, flat brush and I'm just going to tap that off onto my hand to kind of put it make sure it's nicely doused into the brush because when I see his brush work it looks like it's pretty full of product and um, like I said I'm just going to continue and do everything that he's doing all right now the concealer mapping is kind of important as well so he takes a brush and he brings this, as you guys can see, it's really full coverage, which for me is not a bad thing, but um, it's all in the application because when I applied this before, I looked really creasy and cakey afterwards. But I did a test run with this and I noticed a big difference with how it looked, so it must be 
a lot to do with the application. He takes it alongside the nose because he uses this. This is part of the strategy later for pinching and cinching the nose. So I'm just going to, you know, cover that up completely. And I'm just going to check and see if he blends that before applying in other areas. Okay, yeah, I wanted to check that because it makes a difference whether you need to blend that out right away or whether that can sit. So what I'm going to do is take up a little bit more and he applies it everywhere that it needs to go and then he starts to blend. So he's going to do the other eye first um, because some concealers really need to be moved right away and this is creamier so that might be, you know, the strategy behind that. So again, he's got He's got this kind of painted down the side of the nose all the way to the nostril. It's all covered in here. This is all covered. And it's completely under the eye. And I know this gave me a heart attack at first, all this concealer. <laughs> like, I'm like, oh my God, I'm going to look like a cakey mess. It's almost so much that it reverses the cakiness, if that's possible. Um, but I noticed it held yesterday when I tried it so um, but I did have a real bad dry patch under my eye so just make sure you really hydrate your eyes before you attempt anything like this I'm just gonna see where else he puts this he puts it also across the forehead here I think to grab a little bit of highlight in this area I might be needing a little bit more very generous with it Woo! And you can see this can act as a highlighter because of the brightness of it and the coloring. So he just really fills this part in and then does the cupid's bow here and then this part of the lip. Looks ridiculous, huh? Well, let's see if he knows what he's doing. One thing he did do as well that I didn't catch is that um, we need to do is he does the middle of the nose. This is part of the making the nose look snatched. So I'm taking that brush and bringing it down my long and pointy nose. <laughs> I don't know if this is... See, taking with a grain of salt, this might not be the best for my particular face shape, but I'm not really taking that into consideration at all with this because the whole, whole aim is to try to recreate something that someone else is doing whether it suits my face or not so he does mention that just keep in mind that this may not suit your face now here's a little bit of the magic he starts to use the uh, beauty blender and blend this out so I'm going to continue with that so here he's going to start to really press and buff this into the skin so basically taking the tip portion of it and he's moving it upwards and buffing it in, buffing it in. He does take this around the eyelid as well. He just uses whatever's residual is left on the sponge and from just dragging it around to um, make that work. So I'm just, this is a little more time consuming so um, I might just speed this up a little bit so that you guys get the gist but th part of the magic of Spencer is that he is a master blender and so you have to really consider taking your time with this is not a run out the door look this is a you know possible red carpet look or um, you know special event look so you know rubbing it around for two seconds to make it blend is not kind of the strategy here you're doing a, a you know some master work here so take your time to um to do all of this blending because it will be worth it for that look in the end and this is what you know the movie stars are paying you know thousands of dollars for a, a specialized artist to do is to take the time to do this detailed blending and I know Spencer's really amazing at mapping the face and, and uh, knowing where to highlight and contour on each specific person. He doesn't do the exact same thing on everybody, but he has some similar strategies which I've noticed. Okay, I don't wanna I don't wanna be too aggressive here because I've already kind of wrecked this line that I made. <laughs> Hold on. A little bit of a dry blending brush and just fix that because I'm talking and I'm not paying attention. Okay. 
I don't want to lose my my nose line here so yeah you can see how easy it is to mess that up and this is definitely going to crease you guys because um, it's a ton of product and you'll have to move the crease before you cement this otherwise it will you'll cement in a bunch of creasy makeup so you have to make sure that that is you know very carefully blended so he takes his time with this I mean he'll just go there and pick away like slow and gentle just slow and gentle and I'm even going probably too fast so I'm gonna blend for a couple minutes and I'll speed this up so and put some music on. Next step is going to be a cream bra a cream contour, sorry. He's using a Fenty one. He doesn't normally, he's never used this product before. He normally uses something like a, um, uh, this, like a Huda, Huda Beauty. This is the Fair Tantour color. And I'm watching his placement. Now I have low forehead, but her forehead is, is higher here and a little bit less space here. But um, he's using a brush and he what he's doing with it is he takes it up on the brush, he diffuses it on his hand just to kind of disperse the product a little bit, and then begins to apply it in a kind of a stipply sort of motion. He starts here on the, on the temple area, on both sides. Whoop, I didn't disperse it enough. You see, you gotta watch what you're doing. Jeez Louise. You gotta really grind it into the uh, brush and it's building dimension into the face and don't worry about it being unblended right now because it's going to blend out. I'm just going to see his next part after forehead. I'm trying to get his motions down so he's using a, yeah, a small blush brush like I am and now he's going underneath the cheekbone area and using this and he uses this kind of, let me get this motion down. Sorry, I had to get that he kind of Sort of a quick rubby motion. <laughs> I don't know how to explain it. Um, all right, displaying it there. Do both cheeks. Really dispersing the product kind of generously in there. It's up and bring dimension back. That's where I would place the cream contour. The reason I don't draw on the dramatic lines onto the faces because it's such a pain to blend out and you're never really going to achieve that perfect blend using that method. So with applying it with this kind of brush that's not... If you draw on the contour it's really hard to blend afterwards so having this method is easier to blend later and then what he does is he takes that brush, same brush, he doesn't like to use too many brushes per look, he takes it on the side of the nose and drags, whoo, drags that down. That is some chunk of color. Might be a little darker than his, but his is pretty prominent as well. Takes us down the nose. I'm trying to make it equal. He's faster than me. So you're trying to get this dark, dark, light, light to make it skinnier. And then he takes the bottom and touches underneath here which that I can use because I've got a really long nose. Gets all this placement in place first. Then he's going to go ahead and do under the lip. He pinches this and just kind of goes underneath here. It's a shadow that kind of enlarges your lips later. Building a bit of structure there and then he goes into the jawline kind of more in a quick brush stroke motion and puts a little bit under the jaw. He disperses the product a little bit. I 
That looks really crazy in the camera, you guys. Look at the difference. Woo! Really structuring the face. Because these are quite creamy, they don't dry down so quickly and you're able to manipulate them. Right, let's see what he does for blending. I think we got this pretty good. Now what he's going to do is really detail the blend. So basically this is where the magic comes in. He takes this beauty blender and he does this kind of gentle pouncing and just by going over and over and over and over it, it works the lines out and he takes his time with this. This is not like a two second process and you're done and really, you know, works the product into the skin, making it part of the skin. So taking away the really direct lines on the nose, he kind of just again, really just goes over it and touches it and making sure that it's not like a really visible line, but yet you don't want to take everything away at the same time. So practice your blend here and take your time. Make sure that you have light. Make sure you can see what you're doing because this is something you don't want to walk out of the house with <laughs> if you haven't blended it very well. Um, but yeah, I mean, I look way darker <laughs> because of the tanned effect that he did, but it's okay. I'm just gonna go back and try to remove some of the creasing that occurs, and that's gonna happen, you guys. You wanna make sure that's cleared out just by pouncing your beauty blender on top of the product again, and it will move the crease out before you cement it in with powder. And I know a big part of his magic is, is how he applies the powder as well. So let's see how he does that. So the next step is he's using, I didn't have a big one of these, but I had one come as a sample, thank goodness, thank you Sephora, is the uh, Makeup Forever uh, HD setting powder. And he takes this, it's, I've got it a little bit in the lid here. Um, first does around the eye area, which is brilliant first because of the creasing that ha happens around the eyes. So basically, he doesn't go in and do, whew, doesn't go in and do baking right away. He takes this and sets it first. And that's one of his big tricks. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and just set. This is where it gets a little bit scary, you guys, because this is where things can go really, really wrong. Setting that under eye so it doesn't look too cakey, but looks sealed. It's tricky. Make sure your makeup's perfect before you do this. I screwed up, you guys. I was supposed to seal this with the powder puff. It's my bad. I'm going to do that just so you guys can see it. I was using the sponge, which I also do, but I messed that up. Please back that up and you're going to take your powder puff and press it in and then press in the makeup really well to the skin. I'm so sorry about that, you guys. And you're going to go ahead and do the rest of the face with that as well. And it does make a difference what you use on how it appears. It's so strange because on camera I could see the reflect of the um, powder, but in the mirror you can't see it. That's one thing about this Makeup Forever powder is that um, it is great and refined for sealing, but you have to watch for cameras for getting flashback. And the way that he combats this is he uses this around the eye area first to seal it, and then he's going to use another powder, which will do the full seal up all over and that's going to be I'm going to use the Laura Mercier translucent powder he uses the Anastasia one but he uses this a, a lot as well and again I'm going to use the powder puff this time I'm just going to follow what he's doing I mean I probably wouldn't put it in my hand normally but I'm I put some powder into my hand and I'm just going to go ahead and take that um, powder puff and dip it in and um, go ahead and seal the rest of the makeup. I think I've got too much on there. 
I'm going to take the other side and just press that in. Whoops! Without this being sealed, you guys, it will slip slide and everything. So you've got you've got to do some sealing, even if you don't use powder. This would not you'd not be able to do this look without powder. It would not happen. But because this has uh, doesn't have that kind of light reflect, it won't give that same kind of what it is in that. I can really see the white cast from that Makeup Forever powder underneath. Make sure you go um, and seal up your neck and everything like that because if you don't and you have, you might have transfer from other people. <laughs> If you do give hugs right now, maybe you have family that you're going to hug. If you're putting this on, make sure that you powder everything that you put a, a moist product on. Okay, the next product he uses is actually a Charlotte Tilbury. It's a it's the powder. I've got the powder, but not in the shade that he's using. He's using the uh, number three shade, which is a darker shade. I do have, however, the airbrush bronzer from Charlotte Tim Tilbury, and it looks like a very, very similar color. So now he's going to begin bronzing, and he's using kind of a medium-sized um, brush, and he begins at the cheek area. So I'm just going to swirl a little bit, and I tap it onto my hand to check how much I have on there. And then he, he's starting to do a bronzy effect right under the cheeks first. See, she doesn't have these age spots that I do. <laughs> and I'm just going to see where else he's going to apply this to. Wow, I thought he was going to put it in more areas of the face. So he really only put it like just in here under the, on the cheekbone area, just underneath um, and where the contour was at and just slightly above. But he didn't put anything anywhere else. And now he's moving on to eyebrows. And he's using the Anastasia Brow Wiz, which I have. So I'm just going to see if I can find the color he's using. Right, so I don't have the medium brown, but I have chocolate. It's just one uh, shade up, I think. So he goes in and takes the uh, Brow Wiz and sort of does these side strokes to it. And he really rubs it into the hair. And I'm watching how he does the structure. He actually doesn't change the structure too much he really is just kind of filling it all in and trying to it, it, she likes her her eyebrows quite strong but it's not overly extended it's extended a little bit and He's not overly complicated with the brows, actually. Sort of does a painting of the hair and just a really full coveraged eyebrow. No, like, spaces on this look. It's just nice and solid and just combs it through. All right, I'm going to use, I think this is a Zoeva Lux Crease brush. I can't really see it too well. He's taking um, the the bronzer and just putting a little bit on the eyeshadow brush and uh, taking that into the transition area in here to build a little bit of depth which is what's great about that is it's kind of mimicking the natural tones that are already brought throughout your face and it makes the makeup look more polished in a way and so take this trick and run with it use your bronzer in your transition area. So he ends up using the Huda Beauty Topaz Obsessions palette, um, but I believe the brown looks identical, and this is the brown that he's using, whoops, this one here, and using a medium uh, shader brush, and he's going into the crease area. I'm just taking some up onto my brush here, and um, he's going in and basically really kind of creating a nice little V, outer V. Just going to play that 
a really deep brown color in the palette to add some dimension back into the eye by placing that in the outer V. And then once that's done, I'm going to go back. All right, so we're going to just have to take a minute and blend this out for a second. He, he didn't take very much on the brush. I, I think I might have even taken more than him, but that's okay. I'll just keep blending it. So if you get a little bit too much on your brush, just keep going with your blending. And I rub off the excess onto my hand. And just take your time with it and keep blending. Because it's, we know we get impatient. We want it to be done, like done. <laughs> but it takes time to move the product around and blend it. And I'm just trying to make sure that I keep a nice crisp V like he's doing. This part gets interesting, you guys. So I just, um, you know, did the other side off camera, the brown. And he's taking his powder puff and he's going in, he bends it in half. And then he's put the translucent powder in his hand, like I've done here. Again, I'm using the Laura Mercier. Um, he's using Anastasia. They're very similar. Um, pressing. A, a good amount of powder and he's going to bake under the eyes and this is the part that freaks me out because of my age and he just really puts a generous amount up and on the edge and it kind of crisps up the edge lines but he's doing that for two purposes to brighten up under the eyes and also uh, for falling debris because he's going to be adding he's going to be adding another uh, eyeshadow color and if any drops then he's got it covered and he kind of does the side of the node as nose node nose as well before he continues on with his eyeshadow process so that's kind of different to cut it midway like that I've never really seen that done before we're in the middle of your eyeshadow now you're going to add the baking underneath the eye. And if you've never tried baking, just try it one time. See if you hate it. See if you like it. It might be good for some occasions and things like that. I think it's better in dark light if you're mature skinned because you can uh, get it settled into the fine lines and stuff like that. So then he takes the uh, uh, copper color in this palette. So I'm just going to take this because I think this is the closest to what he's using. And then he puts that on the middle of the eye. I just got to double check the brush. All right, so this is interesting. It's interesting about um, what brushes that he uses. So he's gone back to this original fluffy brush and it looked like it already had color pigment on it. So I'm going to guess it's the same one that he used to put the transition shade in. And he does that a lot. He doesn't like to use a big variety of brushes, but using this fluffy brush, no wonder he's going to get fallout because if I, yeah, I'm tapping and it's, it's going to fall out. That's why he's probably put so much under the eyes and he's just tapping that on to the lid area to give a little bit of reflect. But whoo, it's making a mess. I don't think this is a good idea, Spencer. I don't think this move is good. I am going to brush this away. In this particular instance, I'm going to make an executive decision here <laughs> and try to do something a little bit differently because what he's doing is not, not really working. I'm going to take a little bit of Fix It Plus, spray a brush, and let's see. I'm going to put this up onto the brush, pat it in to the Fix It. And see, I'm getting a lot more color payoff like that. It's not going everywhere. So that's a fail for me for when he when he put it on that way. So just put a little bit of moisture into the product and I'm getting a lot more payoff. And I'm just tapping it on the middle of the eye for reflect. Okay, next big move he's making is he's taking the um, bronzer that he used earlier. So I'm going to do the same. And he's using kind of a, a flat stubby brush. This is the MAC 214 brush. I don't know, he hasn't listed the brushes here, but I looked at the structure and it looks very similar. So he starts and he just goes near the lash line and creates a little bit of dimension into the eye by doing a gradient effect. So first he's going in with the soft color and then he's going back in 
with um, that dark brown shade earlier in closer to the eye so this is kind of wider here and then this goes in close to the eye kind of acting as your eyeliner and pressing it in as a shadow here to the eye so the bronzer first and then the brown to create dim d dimension and a little bit of a gradient effect. Right now he's going to go in with the Inglot uh, gel liner which he loves and I happen to have one here. I've got the Inglot um, eyeliner. Oh well, you can use it for eyebrows too. But uh, And he's going to go in and do the top lid with this and he starts in and does kind of a, I'm, I'm pressing it into my brush you guys, and he does a nice strong top line and it's not super refined at first he sort of takes it and does a, a little bit of a wing with it okay then he takes his time and just perfects uh, the line a little bit I can't talk and do this at the same time So I don't want to miss this step. The, he does a second part to his eyeliner here. He takes like a fine detail brush. This is um, a Sigma detailed lip, but you can use it for eyes. And he runs over the line of the eyeliner to give a more diffused line and smoked out effect. So skipping this step would change the look of the liner. So I didn't want to, I don't want to skip it. And it makes it smudgier. Okay, so I'm going to be putting on this uh, Amazon special lash. He's using the Tati lashes and I'm taking it from this grouping here um, and putting those on the eye. I wait till the glue is a little bit tacky and then just go ahead and plop her down. And these might be a little bit longer and a little bit glammy, but that's totally fine for this look. So I'm peeling it off, trying to make sure I have a good solid grab on it because if the peel is done improperly, you can rip apart the lash. And then I'm painting the lash with the Callus lash glue. This is my favorite lash glue lately. So much so I ordered a couple back up. Um, oh, this lash is pretty big. I can see it. Anyway, while it's giving it a chance to get tacky, just make sure the edges are kind of nicely covered. He doesn't really show the application part on the glue. Um, and so I, while that's getting tacky, um, and he taught this as well, is to just kind of oops, go roll it back and forth so it gets in the shape of your eye while it's getting a little bit of time to get tacky-er. And then uh, it will be more malleable and better to, easier to put on. And then hopefully, I don't have any issues popping down. But you never know with lashes. You can have a good lash day and a bad plopping day. First one went on no problem and this one might not be quite tacky enough too. That doesn't help. Now a big pet peeve for uh, Spencer is there being a gap in between um, the, your own lashes and the lashes. So I am going to follow his instructions on this as well. Okay, crap, a really important part of this is, is he lifts the upper corner of the lash when he applies it. So I'm just gonna drag this up just slightly. So it gives the eye a more lifted appearance. If you have to, you can always re-glue that's fine but this seems to be working so he's lifting up the edges so it, it gives you a little bit of a lift on the on the edges of your lashes for a trick I think he, he lets that dry for a little bit before he continues on the eyes so what he's using is a blush from KKW Beauty and I was trying to find a color similar and I think this is going to be it here this is from Scott Barnes called Sweet Cheeks it's kind of a corally color and he starts to sweep the cheek 
maybe. I apply this to the apples of the cheeks and then I diffuse it outwards. And I'll even bring it underneath the eyes a bit just to. So applying to the apples of the cheeks, that's here. I've got to need a mirror for this. <laughs> and he diffuses it outwards. I'm just going to take a brush. I'm guessing that he sometime or another wiped off this bake, but he didn't tell us when. Maybe he just forgot. So we'll just take the bake off by using a clean brush and just wiping that away. And let's go back to blush. So he's really taking it up and under the eye. This is one of his little trademarks, which is so interesting. Give it that youthful, healthy look. Yeah. So I just am making sure I'm doing it in the right place. So he brings it all the way up and on the apples. So focusing it here. There's so many different ways to just even apply blush alone to make it so interesting. Yeah, so just applying it on the cheeks and lifting. He's a blush lover, so he doesn't, he's not shy on how much blush to use. So apples of the cheeks and bringing it on up and under the eye. He's not shy about uh, under the eye, which kind of is so different for me. But that's fine. We're going to try it going to learn. All right, next he's using a, a highlighter uh, from Ofra in the color Soho. I have an Ofra highlighter, but it's a Samantha March one and it doesn't match this very well. And so I'm going to try using this Becca Champagne Pop because this color looks awfully similar and I've seen him use Becca highlighters before. So I'm trying to use a brush similar in the uh, dense in the size and density that he's using and I'm just going to see where he applies this. To bring, he calls it to bring life back to the face. So you can see, I mean, I've got older skin and some texture. I don't have this perfectly flawless skin. Um, but we're doing this anyway. Let's see where else he goes. I'm not building this up to be super blinding. I want it to remain soft because I don't want to accentuate the pores or the texture of the skin, especially since we're filming in HD. Too late, and Spencer. And then I'll pop a little bit onto <laughs> the center of the nose and the cube. Okay, so he does it a little bit here. Any highlighter on mature skin. Oops, I put way too much there. I'm sorry. Any uh, a highlighter for me does accentuate a little bit of the texture of the skin and the age, but sometimes you kind of take the good with the bad and you like the look of it enough where you're willing to sacrifice a little bit of <laughs> maybe what looks the best on your skin. But yeah, I'm wondering if I can just kind of press that into the skin a little bit so it's not sitting so on the surface of the powder. That's a little bit better. So this is a big important part, you guys. He then takes his pinky and he puts that down the center of the nose. So let's do that as well. And he doesn't bring it up this high. Okay, so not to here, but just down the center and across just the tip like that. That Becca highlighter is pretty blinding as well. Cupid's bow and chin. Cupid's bow and chin. All right then. I always, you know, um, think some of this is like I never would have thought of that because I would have thought it would have looked sweaty, but it's the trend now, so we're just doing it. So brought a little bit of life to the face, I guess. So the next move he's making is he's using the Better Than Sex Mascara. I don't have that one. I'm going to use my Thrive Mascara. And what he's doing is creating a spidery effect on the bottom lashes. So this is going to take just a little bit of patience and building up. And it's a look. Like some people don't like this look, but we're copying 
what he does and just making a really good spidery bottom lash. And the Thrive Mascara, I don't know if you guys remember, is a tube mascara, so it coats the eyelashes in tubes and makes it super easy to take off later, which I love. This is another one of his things, is that he takes the mascara after the lashes have dried down and he takes this, I'll try to do this without a mirror, and he puts his thumb here and he really presses, hard to do to yourself actually, presses those lashes into the, um, into the false lashes. All right, he's going to lip liner next and he's using a kind of a real soft medium brown lip liner and I tried to find something as close as I could. This is the BH Cosmetics. Mm, uh, where's the color? Muse. Um, he's using a KKW lip liner. I don't have that exact one. And he's working the shape into be a three dimensional thing. So I'll have to keep my lips close for a sec to do this. Now that I'm looking at this, his is just slightly deeper. I'm going to find something just a little bit quite neutral, but it's deeper. Okay, so I'm going to move to the NYX <laughs> lip liner in Sand Beige. I just found that other one just slightly too light. This looks more on point. I'm trying to get his shaping as well. Seems to be what he's going for is a three-dimensional lip and uh, so basically doing a thicker line and focusing in on the outer corner. Amazon again! Here we go again! So uh, 10 minutes after I put my lashes on, guess what came? <laughs> it's the lashes from Tati Lashes, but you know what? I'm. I think this is around these ones here. I'm just going to roll with these, but in upcoming videos, I will use those guys. Sorry about that, guys, about the little break. So back to work. We're on the lips, and I'm just trying to... where it gets tricky. So I have opted to use, see I'm trying to find colors that are sort of that muted rose color and I'm close. I'm trying to mimic his color you guys. So I ended up having to go between a, a Jouer and this is the Morphe color in BDHD and it's this kind of paler color and I mixed it in with that Jouer. Um, Sorry, not the Jouer. The Smashbox color I can't see. Oh, it's called Stepping Out. I mixed the two together to kind of get a, a paler rose color. And I think we got it. It looks a lot more similar. So he's using a Lorac, a Lorac, Lorac color, uh, lip gloss color. And this is the closest I think I can find. This is the uh, Pat McGrath lip gloss in all things magical. He loves a glossy lip at the end, so we are going for it. A mirror might help me. This is my lip gloss, so I can put it right on my lips. <laughs> I actually think that's a really pretty lip. It's a kind of a muted, soft rose rosy brown color. I love that. Good choice, Spencer. Okay, so he's going to do the all over setting spray, so I'll do that. with. Uh, this is from Urban Decay, the All Nighter. I'm going to take one little extra step, you guys, for us mature women and spray a little bit onto your sponge and place that underneath the eye and it will help make it look less cakey. And since we put so many kinds of powders and things. Okay, so 
in case you forgot, I'm going to flash my before and I'm coming back with hair done. I could not find a blonde bob, bob blonde, blonde bob wig because I'm trying to make it as close to her as I could. I'm, you know, obviously not 22 years old or whatever she is. So I just, I went with this pink one um, because it's the fairest that I had in a bob. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this. I love how he does at the end this little kind of photo shoot moment and I'm going to see if I can recreate anything similar. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Stay tuned for more Painted by Spencer unique and wild techniques and helpful techniques and crazy techniques. Take care you guys. Bye!